read your own five shootouts. Storm the peace a lot. Please tell me you didn't get arrested again. Twice, but I broke out. Yes, welcome to DBL. That is a clip from Beverly Hills Cop 4. Eddie Murphy is back as Detroit Cop. Axel Foley, 30 years after the last film was released. It's out on Netflix next year. Take a look. So how many people have you so far? Well, I haven't anybody. Yeah, 50-50. 50-50. Is it that high? So far. Yeah. Wow. And much of the old cast is back from the franchise. Here's Eddie from the original film. Okay. There he is now. Not much of a difference. Not at all. Not, at Not all. fair. Also, Judge Reinhold from 40 years ago. Okay. And today. Good. And John Ashton, who played his partner, there they are. And who can forget Bronson Pinchot as the eccentric Serge. I can't wait. Jeff, I know yeah. this is your movie, it's man. Super nostalgic. I was watching a thing with Eddie Murphy, and they said they wanted him to grow his hair out a little bit to look exactly like the character, because he still looks exactly the same. He's like, I wouldn't have the same hairstyle 40 years ago. <laughs> that movie was made 40 years Crazy ago. It's insane. Me. He looks exactly the same. But I don't know why. You know when you're like a kid and you have like a VHS tape and you just watch something over and over? I watch this movie a thousand <laughs> times. I know every single line. One of the Waynes brothers gave him the bananas, the banana in the yeah, tailpipe. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Like, oh, this, I, every, everything from the movie, I remember everything. Remember how to get fingerprints? He took the the, uh, the glue and put in all this crazy stuff. E right? Everybody had those VHS tapes and there were like two or three movies Nobody on it. And talking. you and you just honestly <laughs> those movies are ingrained in you because not only are you young, but those are your first kind of coming of age. Like, yeah. oh, this is when adult is. You see, you see the first actress, so you're like, I like her. You know, you're growing up. <laughs> you're growing up, honestly. You remember yeah. those movies. I just love Eddie Murphy as just like what he's done with his career. Yes. I think everybody kind of jumped on board with the, you know, their agent was like, you got to get a social media, let your fans in and have access. And people like Will Smith and people, they did that and that worked out for them, I guess, sometimes. But Eddie Murphy did the other way. Eddie Murphy, like I said, he only shows up every seven or eight years like that singer Sade. Yes. And he drops something and then he goes away. Yeah, I don't know what his political take is. Don't care. Right. I don't know the names of his kids. That's not my business. I don't know where he lives. Don't care. Just know that when he comes on the screen, he entertains me and he goes away. And I, I really like that as a And style. you know what, what you'll love is, and I told Al to watch this, it's the new Netflix special with Kevin Hart. Headliners only, yes. Did you watch it? Not yet. Chris Rock and Kevin Hart. And there's a part where Chris Rock was very young and apparently was not successful yet, performing in that same set. Cellar, you know the yeah, one the in Manhattan, cellar. the mm -hmm. comedy cellar that Eddie Murphy was discovered in. Eddie Murphy happened to see Chris Rock perform in it and right then and there offered him a small speaking part in one of the Beverly Hills Cops. No Very small. Way. But it gave him his start. It allowed him to help get an agent. It had Eddie Murphy become a mentor. And then they're interviewing other comics and they all have similar stories about how Eddie Murphy mm -hmm. literally shepherded them throughout the indus industry. And we don't hear that. Wow. Because Eddie Murphy's not on social media bragging about right. it. So kudos to his character. Right. I know that you're talking about him as an entertainer, but right. apparently he's a, a good man. damn good person too. Right. Mm. Wow. And Chris, right. Chris Rock was the mailman in Boomerang. Oh, Remember? Oh, yeah. All these little boomerang. cameos. That's yes. right. Yeah. Good one. Okay, so this is an interesting story. Megan McCain is firing back at her former co-stars on The View after Anna Navarro called out a former co-host for using her name to gain influence. So it came up when they were talking about the Hunter Biden scandal. Watch. Did Hunter Biden influence pedal on his last name? Yes, he did. So did half of Washington. People sitting at this table did it. Did Joe, uh, did Hunter <laughs> Biden? Who at Actually, who at this table peddled on their last I name? I did. I'm not talking about currently. Oh. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, none of the hosts named Megan specifically, still Megan posted on X that she found the comments derogatory and slanderous and said she would be consulting with her lawyers. She also said, quote, I would never and have never influence peddled in my life, let alone with foreign adversaries. I am no Hunter Biden. Erica's having a moment. Yeah, Erica's having a real moment. Um, sometimes you just got to sit down and eat your food and be quiet. <laughs> Megan McCain, what are you doing, girl? <laughs> it's okay. Your last name's McCain. Your father was John McCain. <laughs> it got you in the door. 
what did, what did Anna Navarro say that was so wrong? She said the truth. She didn't say that you used your name for foreign adversaries. She said that your name got you through the door. Child, put your credentials next to anybody else who was in a position to get that job and you will see that your name got you through the door and that's okay. People get opportunities because uh, they have a leg up on one thing or another. Maybe they're just extraordinarily beautiful or they come from a lot of money or all, any, there's things that you have that give you a slight leg up. It's staying, it's your staying power. It's your ability to capitalize on the opportunity. No one's taking that away because we talking about you right now. But you can't be DeLulu and talk about <laughs> hiring an attorney for slander. She ain't say not one thing wrong. Not one. So eat your food, child. Mm. I, I also think, look, the average person who watches that might not have known she was speaking about Meghan McCain or it could have been Barbara, whatever. Sh why stick your neck out if you don't want to be known as that? You sure as heck put yourself in that spotlight. Talking about lawyers, I completely agree with Erica. Nothing was defamatory because you never named the person. I, so you I, can't I, be defamed. I think, I think people knew. Dude, you can't. You, Okay, Who was you it, can't Sonny? be defamed if you're maybe hinting and vague. If you're defaming someone or slandering someone, their name is out there. It has to be super clear to the average person to meet the scrutiny that it takes to defame a public figure. That was not it. That ain't it. I, I do need to clarify something. Okay. Sit down and eat your food is a saying. Oh, yeah, yes. you need to clarify I'm not that. Uh, telling, yes. Oh, I, just want to be I, didn't, very see, I didn't even go I there. Didn't, but yeah, me, I want to be very yeah. clear. Okay. Let me add another layer, even though I agree with you guys, but I'll play devil's advocate here. She was upset that they it came on the heels of the Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden conversation, which we are now talking about criminally. So for her, she mm. felt like it was slanderous, Jeff, because she believed being compared on the heels of that conversation compared or to Hunter. Yeah, I, I get it, but I don't, right? I, I don't think there's anything defamatory there. There's nothing. And we, I think if you do watch that show, you knew exactly who she was talking about. But you could, if she just would have threw it the other way, because I liked everything she said, I actually said the same thing. She could have said, there's some people that got on this table for that. And half of Hollywood is in this industry because of that. Absolutely. Don't tell me everyone in Hollywood, the nepotism and all that. Everyone's last name is some star that your parents knew. So it's all of Hollywood. So if she would have blanketed like that, maybe it wouldn't have been so personal for right. Megan McCain, but she did it like yeah. at this table, which got a little personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It starts in college. Are you a legacy? They ask you on the application. Has anybody else in your family gone to this college? And I had to say yes. Oh, and so that's you, okay. Yes. Okay. It really yeah. is. I said yes and I didn't get in. <laughs> 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 All right. Dakota, <laughs> Dakota Johnson says she is a big fan of sleep and self-care. She told the Wall Street Journal she likes to get at least 10 hours of sleep at night, but can easily sleep for 14. She also is a fan of taking baths in the middle of the day, hot yoga, and her morning coffee, which is an oat milk flat white. Let me just say she's getting a little Gwyneth Paltrow to me right here. Just at least Gwyneth Paltrow works. At least right. she's an editor Thank of you. Poosh. Right. Her Goop. Not Poosh. Goop. <laughs> But this Poosh is Courtney. You're right. And they do collabs a lot. They do. But Sorry. let me just tell you, this is Poosh. So Poosh. Yeah, Poosh. I feel Poosh. like we're going to get beeped for saying that. <laughs> it's Courtney Kardashian. It sounds it's like Courtney a fetish. Yeah. Yeah. P O O S H. And, and they, do, they do collabs yeah. a lot. Okay. But let me just say, this is super privileged because who doesn't have to work in the middle of the Thank day? Thank you. Super obnoxious. Yeah. And the oat milk flat latte, I can sleep 14 hours. Both married to Chris Martin, so he's into that kind of bougie oh, thing. Oh, I did not. Uh, know. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. She's in a relationship, partners with him. Okay. And, and, but it just screams Paltrow to me, and it's getting a little I, privileged. And I don't it's a want to bring that Paltrow into this, but yeah. this is privileged. Yeah, 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 fine. Why don't we sit up here all the time and say, "Live your truth." She's speaking her truth. But somebody's like, "Hey, I'm rich. I don't have to work. I can sleep." I think that's okay too. Okay. Why can't rich people live their truth? It, there's a real like, kind of like sinister like take when it's like, "Oh, I guess I'll I could lay around all day." Yeah, we all want to do that. Mm -hmm. So give me that's five billion, true. I'll be doing the same thing. Yeah. So why can't they? It live their truth. Tone it does. It just comes up tone tone deaf. Deaf. What if it she was like, I shop at the Goodwill? You guys wouldn't say, why are you like talking down to us? That's not what she said, though.
though. So I'm not She's even going to go with your hypothesis does. or like any other additional theory I'm or any other way to think about what she said. No, she said, I like to take baths in the middle of the day. Yes. I like to 14 hours. That means you're going to bed at 10, 10 waking up at noon. It's yes, like Marie it's called Antoinette. living the dream. It's like let them eat cake a little bit to me. It's a little bit. I agree. How are they supposed life. to live their truth then? They can't speak Maybe about their speak real life? Maybe don't speak about that because it's a little so obnoxious. Sorry. Would you tell somebody that was poor not to speak about their life? No, but this is a bit privileged, so I would say maybe we gotta go. Yeah, wow. we gotta go.